What up, Internet? It's Aaron, your personal driver, and today is another live stream. So for all those new drivers out there who just signed up, who need some tips. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to be fine with the audio. I'm going to take these off for now. Today we're going to be talking about surge, guys. We're going to talk about how you use surge, different surge strategies, and situations in which you absolutely can pump, use surge to your advantage. So with that in mind, let's go. So what's up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the stream. Um, hopefully, let's see, let's test out the chat here, see if the chat works. Test. Well, that's not good, it's not showing up. That makes me sad on the inside. Um, let's see if I can figure out why now. Hmm. Sucks. Can you guys see the chat? Is it just me that can't see the chat? The chat normally goes like here ish, right here. Anyway, whatever. I guess I'll try to figure it out. Uh, I see people texting me uh, on the actual YouTube application, um, but I don't see the chat in there. So I'll try to figure out what's going on as we go out here. So, uh, anyway, guys. Um, thanks for coming back. This is uh, live stream number two on uh, the first live stream just a quick review for those of you uh, who didn't get a chance to see it We talked about what strategies were when you first sign up and those strategies are one basically uh, get out there and Drive okay uh, when you're new. It's a little bit scary. Just do it um, You're new in my opinion until you have 500 rated rides um, That's usually about a thousand rides total But whatever so get out there and drive while you're driving, keep a note of where and when it surges, either that in a notebook or Waze has a really good option for that um, if you guys use Waze. Um, and then the third is, I forgot what the third one actually was. Joseph Caster says, chat works, but the video is a bit laggy. Oh, okay. Well, let's see if I can fix that then. Um, da -dun -dun -dun, da -dun -dun -dun. Hopefully that um, fixes the lag problem. We'll see if it does or not. I can always change it again if I have to. Um, but thanks for letting me know it's lagging. Okay, I just updated it. Let's see how long it takes in order to uh, make this stuff work. Um, so anyway, and so once you get to know your uh, area very well okay once you know where the surge is and all that fun stuff um, the next step is actually getting the surge so that's what we're going to talk about today is, is the different surge strategies for new drivers so for those of you who don't know okay you're new so some people might not know I know a lot of people driving already know this but prime time for lift and surge for much better good Joseph I'm glad it's much better and surge for um, who does surge? Uh, my brain's not working. See, this, that's why I don't like live streams. I like recording this so I can edit all this nonsense out. Uber, Uber does surge. <laughs> so um, what that is is a multiplier. Okay, so let's say Uber and Lyft pay you a dollar a mile in your market. Um, it's going to vary. I, I'll the way you find out. Um, yep, you're welcome. So the way you find out your uh, per mile rate is going into your app on the, not the driver's side, but on the passenger side. Um, and then like, just look up a length of time or whatever, like say your house to a stadium or McDonald's or whatever. And then it'll pop up on a price. If you click on that price, it'll tell you what your immediate per mile and per minute rates are. But for the math, it's just easier to do it with a dollar. So I'm just gonna do a dollar. So just pretend your market's a dollar. It might be more or less than that. Um, but you get paid a dollar per mile and what surge does is it takes that and multiplies it same with prime time so on uber it's done by a 1.0 system 
and on lift is done by a percentage system, but it's the same math. So if you see a 2.0 on Uber and a 100% prime time, those are the same exact things. Uh, it means you're gonna get double your rate. So if you are driving for $1 per mile and you have a 2.0 surge on Uber, you get paid $2 a mile. Same with prime time at 100%. So the reason this is important is for several reasons. And uh, in post-production, maybe around here somewhere, I might link it to my other video where I explain how you make money, but that's another video entirely. Just realize that when you are driving for Uber and Lyft, time is your biggest enemy, okay? You can only do X amount of rides per hour, X amount of rides per day, okay? Which translates to, you can only do X amount of miles per day, okay? If you can only, you know, at people average two to four rides per hour. It depends on how far they have to drive, how big their marketplace is, and all that fun stuff. But just, I want you guys to know and realize that um, the time restricts how many rides you're gonna be able to get, okay? So what Surge and Prime Time do is they're multipliers. So let's say you can only do two rides a, an hour in your market, you live in the suburbs, you have to drive really far to pick people up, you have to drive really far to drop them off, okay? In a city, you can probably do like four or five or even sometimes six rides an hour because you're only going a mile, two miles. You're like in and out, in and out, boom, 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 boom. That's how, how it works in the city. But for most markets, I would say it's probably three or four if you're like a real professional driver who's been doing this for a long time and knows how to do, the, do everything correctly. So if you're only getting one or two in an hour, you're new, don't worry about it. That might be your market and when you're new, you get less rides because you don't really know all the hot spots, okay? What Surge lets you do is basically, essentially, take more rides per hour than you would normally be able to do. That means more money in your pocket is what that means. So if you get a 3.0 Surge, that's like taking three rides at once. Does that make any sense? So um, instead of a dollar a mile, you're making $3 a mile. So it's essentially like you've taken three rides and then two of them are completely free. And the reason Surge is so fantastic is because those additional two rides that you've taken on top are free to you. That's free profit. It doesn't cost you any additional money. Because the way you calculate profit is you take how much money, money and income you have and you take away your cost to operate for how many miles you drove. That's a separate video. I have one on my channel. You can look it up, how to calculate your own miles. But in the future, new driver videos, we'll deal with the math later. I don't want to confuse anybody too much. New drivers got to keep it simple, right? A simple ABCs. So, Surge lets you take more rides and essentially free rides without any cost to you, which means more profit in your pocket. It's going to translate to more money at the end of the day too. But don't be fooled. Just because you have more money on your app because you've done really well doesn't mean you're making that money right if you drive a thousand miles to make a thousand dollars that's not as much profit as if you drive 500 miles to make a thousand dollars the second scenario the person's made twice as much money because they have half as much cost okay that's what surge does it's free money that doesn't have any cost in your pocket so now the question that you all are asking and want to know is what do I have to do to get surge well like I said in my other video you want to write down when and where it surges in your market because it's going to different be different in every single market so i don't know where you drive and i don't know where the surge is where you drive but it does somewhere so over the last couple of months as a new driver as you record where and when surge happens you'll see patterns develop okay so think of it like two things really <laughs> two things really the first thing is it's a lot like fishing okay um Think of, think of all your rides as fish and they live in a lake and you are at the lake now and you got your fishing pole, right? Uber, excuse me, Uber and Lyft is your fishing pole. So you, you got to throw your line out into the water and catch fish. Well, we all know some parts of that lake are going to have more fish, bigger fish and have better fishing in general. The secret is when you first get there is to find those hot spots. Okay. And as a new driver, that's what you're doing your city, your county, wherever it is that you make your money, that is your lake. Passengers are your fish and you gotta find the hot spots, the watering spots. We all have that secret fishing spot that has been passed down from grandpa to dad to you now and that you're taking your kids out to. 
and it's just for whatever reason under the water in that particular spot the fish like that area and that's where they hang out well it's the same thing generally speaking bars clubs movie theaters JB says write it down I guess you never heard of a surge app chaser <laughs> Yeah, that's another video too. So if you go through my video catalogs, I do have the top five apps for Uber. Uh, there are lots of surge apps and all that kind of stuff that keep historical context. But remember JB, this is for new drivers. So I'm talking like basic, basic stuff here, ABC. You're right, there's a lot of great surge multiplier. One of the apps is called Surge Chaser. So if you wanna download that and look at it, you can, that's fabulous. Sherpa Share is another great app uh, that keeps recording. Um, it's the one I use when I'm chasing Surge. But yes, it doesn't matter if you have to write it down, if you put it into an app, or if you put it into your um, Waze function. It doesn't matter how you record the, the Surge. You just need to know when and where the Surge is, okay? So getting back to the lake analogy. So the lake, what the lake uh, analogy is, is what we're talking about here is we're trying to catch fish, in this case, packs, right? If you watch my live streams, I call them fishies. So I go here, fishy, 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 fishy. Um, so that is you need to know when and where customers are, okay? And you know when and where to hit those spots. Because just like fishing on a lake, you know, at noon, they're not going to buy as much because it's too warm. They're at the bottom of the, of the lake. So in the morning, 6 a.m., in the evening, 6 p.m., when the sun's going down, those are the best time to catch fish. It's the same thing in your market. There are certain times that's going to be better to get surged, and you just – you won't know as a new driver what those are until you get out there and try it, even if you have an app, okay? Because you have to you have to get a feel for it. That's what your job as a driver is, is to catch your market and get the best uh, you can, okay? The second part of Surge is, it's just a straight gamble. I mean, it's just, it's like going to Las Vegas and pulling a slot machine. Uh, it's like throwing dice. It's whatever your gambling thing is, roulette, whatever your addiction is uh, for gambling, scratchers, that's what it is. Because surge doesn't last forever. Uh, it only lasts sometimes for minutes, you know, 10 minutes. Sometimes it lasts for an hour. So you might only get one or two rides on surge. So you're gambling. You, you could get one surge ride and go 25 miles and make a lot of money. Or you could get two surge rides and only go two or three miles. They're not going that far and you won't make as much. So, hey, that's the name of the game. If you don't like that uncertainty, this is the wrong job for you. We all have, we call them unicorns in the business. We all have a unicorn where we get, you know, three, four dollars a mile and then we drive for an hour on the freeway because people have money in their pocket, they're drunk and they wanna go home. That didn't happen every time. You know, sometimes you just go down the street um, to a hotel, sometimes their house is like a couple miles away. So that's what happens, hey. It's fishing and it's gambling. That's why this job is sometimes frustrating. That's also why this job is hella fun. Because you sit there on your phone, the surge comes on, you, you, you press log in, and then you just wait. You're like, oh my gosh. It's like you just thrown your dice or the roulette ball is going on the, on the table and you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then boom, the sound hits. Customer comes, you're like, woo, fish on, you gotta reel this fish in. And you pull up and you 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 know you find out where they're going and sometimes you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna make so much money. And sometimes you're like, I gotta get this person dropped off fast because I gotta get back and make more money. So anyway, now that you know the strategy and the theory behind Surge, um, the thing I have to remind everybody is, you have to get there before it surges. Before it surges. Be at the place where it's gonna surge before it surges, okay? If you see a surge, uh, Dorothy says, I had a unicorn on my first ride, exclamation mark. It's awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> Everyone hates you now. <laughs> Everyone send Dorothy the hate for being so lucky all the time. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, get there beforehand, okay? So that's why you have all this data. That's like what JB says, that's why you get an app that has the historical records of Surge. That's why you get your little pen and paper out as a new driver and you write down the areas where there's Surge. That's why you get all this research done beforehand so you can get to where it's gonna Surge beforehand. So I'll just give you an easy one. Not everyone works the night shift, not everyone looks, likes to work in the bars and clubs, but it's a really good starting point for understanding how Surge works. In, in uh, Washington, bars close, 
at 2 a.m. So you get to a bar or club where you know people are going to be requesting rides. You park outside of it or in the general vicinity of that area. And you just sit there with your app off. You don't turn it on and you wait for the bar to close because there's going to be a massive wave of requests and surge at that particular time. Then once the surge hits, you turn your app on and you take your rider one ride or two ride. Okay, That's simple ABC stuff for how to use surge. Everyone does it. There's a lot of places that are going to surge. County fairs, okay, sometimes surge. Um, events like concerts, uh, major speaking engagements, political rallies, protests. All these things have people who either are going to be drinking there, drinking later, or don't are not local, so they're going to need a ride. They don't want to hire somebody, okay? So I'm going to talk about those events secondary, like how you research those those sorts of things. But the secret that I'm trying to tell you is get there beforehand. If a surge hits and you're not there, you're not going to get the surge. Now, as a new driver, it's not a bad idea to chase surge at first because, like I said, you're not going to get the surge. But that's where a lot of people are. So if you don't know your city, you don't know where you're at, and you see a surge, it might be worth it to you as a driver to go check out that area, you know? Uh, maybe there's a reason there and you want to find out. There's a bar or a club or a concert or something that's happening there and you don't know why that it's surging in that area. So get in your car, drive to where it surges. You, you know, you're probably not going to get a surge ride, but then you go, oh, this is like a movie theater that hosts events, not just movies. So when they let the event out, everyone gets out at the same time and they need to go. Or this is a bar, this is a club, that kind of thing. This is the stuff that new drivers need is the research, right? You need to put the research in so you can figure out where it's going to be. But here's the thing. You, as a new driver, are competing against drivers who have been doing this a long time, okay? Some of them two, three, four years. And I've even seen people who have been doing it for longer than that. It, it's hard in this area because it's not as um, old here, but like in California, you know, um, San Francisco, New York, there have been people doing this almost 10 years now. So they know their city, they know their market, they know when it's going to surge. So they're going to get there early, they're going to turn their car off, and they're going to sit in their car and wait for it to surge. And when it does surge, they're going to be the first ones to get rides. So the problem is since surge is based on an algorithm, and I'm saying surge, but surge and prime time is the same stuff for Lyft. The algorithm is based upon how many requests there are versus how many drivers there are online. So when it's surging, the app is freaking out like, oh my God, there's nobody online. We need drivers right now. But as soon as that surge happens, veteran drivers, boom, 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 are logging in and taking those surge rides. So from the time it takes you from where you are to get to where the surge is, those veteran drivers have already taken all of those people who need rides and left of them. So when you get there, there's no more rides and no more surge. That's the secret to become from the difference. That's the secret to this industry, right? And the difference between being a new driver and a veteran driver is knowing where those spots are, getting to the fishing spots and getting the fish before everybody else does. Okay. So get there beforehand. So the next question is, well, then how do you do it? Like, how do you know where it's going to surge? And that's where the research in my other video, the first live stream for new drivers I did, goes. and like JB wrote down where you can get apps online. Um, surge Chaser is a good one. Sherpa Share is a good one. Uh, but that's not the only research you can do, okay? You as a driver need to know what's going on in your city. All the sporting events. So here in Seattle, we have a soccer team. We have a football team. Um, uh, we have, I think we have one more I can't think of. It's not hockey, but something else. But anyway, um, every day you need to see what their schedule is. So if you like the sport or not, you need to be like subscribe to that person's newsletter. You need to know their schedule, uh, when, when they're going to be where that sort of thing. Sporting events are a big surge, you know, producer. Cause there's so many people in the stadium. You need to know all of your local concerts and not just the big ones. The big ones are nice. Like one time I got a 9.0, it was actually 9.3, but nine, nine times the rate after a Bruno's Mars concert here in Tacoma, Washington. So, yeah, the big concerts are nice, but even the small concerts in the smaller venues you need to know about. That's easy. So just 
simple that's simple Google stuff. Use your phone, use your home computer, find out when and where concerts are. One of the best nights I ever had was um, after the Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's a Rocky Horror Picture Show, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens once or twice a year, usually around Halloween. College kids love it. Um, people go there, they get super drunk. It's like a good time. They all dress up in their little costumes and stuff. But since it doesn't happen a lot and it's not a very popular event, there's not a lot of drivers there. So it surged for like an hour, an hour and a half-ish afterwards. I got four surge rides uh, from the Rocky Horror Picture Show because no other drivers showed up. But the reason I knew about that is because that particular uh, music venue, I was subscribed to their newsletter and they, they tell you what their schedule is. So you need to deal with that. Like from the big ones at the big concert venues to like the small little hole in the walls, you need to know where concerts are. The other thing you need to know is um, when different hotels are having events. That's a big one too. Um, last year I made a lot of money when there was like a education conference where a bunch of uh, big wigs from all the universities around the country got together here and had a conference because that isn't on anyone's radar. No one knew about an education conference. That's like a random thing. But since I was subscribed to the Westin's like little scheduler thing, I saw that they were having one. So I was there in front of the Westin at the end of their conference. So you need to do a little bit of research in the car, like what parts of your city surge, and then you need to do a little bit of event surge, okay? So um, let me explain how major events work, like the big ass ones, okay? We're talking like the Seahawks play an NFL game here at home. Oh, colleges, don't forget, if you have a, like a local college, colleges are always having events, college kids always drink, and people like college sports. So yeah, remember that. That's good too. Let me back up from that. So anyway, most events have a pick up and drop off location. Most. Now not everyone does, okay? For example, well, base, baseball. When the Mariners play here in, in um, Seattle, the pick up and drop off zone is just a corner. There's no waiting lot or anything like that. So it kind of creates chaos. So you kind of have to do your best after the game because it's going to get crazy. But most places have a pick up and drop off area. Um, for example, when the dogs, that's what they are, or up here in the University of Washington, they're the dogs. Uh, they have a pretty good football team this year. Their basketball team is pretty good too. But when they play, there's a specific drop off and pick up location. Okay, so there are two things you can do at these events. The easiest one is get to the pick up and drop off location, hang out in your car, watch some YouTube, watch the game if that's your thing, but keep your app off. When the game is over, people start filing in to the pick up drop off location, then you can watch the surge get higher and higher, right? So especially if they win, because if they win, they, people are super drunk, they're super happy, right? And they won't care, they'll just turn their app on, they'll push the button, they don't care how much they're playing. Woo, we won, we won. So you sit in the waiting lot for the surge to go up, the prime time to go up. Then you turn on your app and you get the surge ride. And that's really nice because if there's a pickup and drop off location, that means people are in a waiting area so you can call your customer. So that's the next step you do. So you get your ride, you're excited. It's a 3.5 surge. Woo, yeah, you win. You're the winner, you're the winner, son. Um, you, pick up the, you pick up your app, you call the customer and you ask, I'm at the pickup drop-off location. Here's where the pickup drop-off location is. Where are you? And based on their response is what you do, okay? <laughs> if they say, I don't know where that is, cancel. If they say, oh, well, I'm at this location. Can you come get me? Cancel. If they're like, what do you mean pickup and drop-off location? Cancel. Because here's the thing. There's lots of rides, not enough drivers. Get someone who's close to you. So cancel that shit. Get your next surge and then make sure they get there, okay? Just be patient, be patient, you'll get it. Just realize you're only gonna get one ride, because if you take them and it's not that far away, it's gonna be so much traffic, man. It's gonna be real rough to come back and get a second one. So just wait it out and do your thing. Strategy number two for major large uh, venues like that is 
you um, you go to where they park okay so most stadiums don't or have additional parking off the stadium property somewhere um, a lot of people will turn their parking lots into event only parking areas something like that so you get there outside of the pickup drop-off location and what you're going to try to do is get a search from somebody who either isn't at the game or walked a little bit away from the games because a lot of um, customers who have done this for like a long time will walk a, you know a half a mile to a mile away from the stadium and then request one because the surge is much smaller and two it's easier to find a driver that way so you're not going to get as high of a multiplier by doing that but you can get in and out of that location much easier so you could get two three or four rides of surge by doing by picking them off a little bit away from the block so that's going to take research on your part to find out where people gather after the games after the concert okay um i prefer that one because i hate being stuck in traffic uh, i know you get paid per minute but you don't get paid a lot per minute and i'd rather get a, a, a smaller surge but get more rides for that surge than one surge ride and stay in traffic and you don't know how far you're going to go but it's on you. There's a lot of people who like to get that big fish and you're not going to get a three, $400 ride if you don't try, excuse me, because you can, after concerts, you can get somebody four or five times the price and that are going to go 50 miles. They're there. People do it. They post it online. I've seen it. So if you want to try to catch a big fish, go with, th you know, number one, if you want to make a little bit less money, but more guaranteed money, go with number two. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, let's see how long I've been doing this for though, because I don't want to take too long. I want to do about a half hour. But yeah, okay. I'm doing okay. Okay. Ooh, I just said okay like three times. So another surge strategy is you find an event, like let's say a concert, and it's not a Bruno Mars concert, right? Britney Spears, Britney Spears isn't even famous anymore. Who's famous now? Um, I'm so terrible at things. The weekend, the weekend's popular. He's just here in, in Seattle. I got a lot of surge there. So don't worry about big venues like that. Big venues treat like a sporting event. Find their parking lot or the, the waiting area and get there early. Smaller venues are going to um, surge, not as high and for a lot less frequently, but there are a lot of people that can come out, right? So just because it's a smaller venue doesn't mean there's not going to be surge. Remember, there's not going to be drivers. Like you're going to be the only Uber or Lyft driver at a smaller concert in the city, right? Maybe there'll be two of you. So there'll be a surge. It's just you have to jump on it higher, right? Like when you're waiting outside of the Seahawks game, you wait until the surge gets to three or four times the rate and then you log in. But when you're at a smaller concert, you're just going to log in as soon as it surges. So when they're, when they're playing these smaller venues, you park basically outside the main entrance, just on the street, because they're gonna get out somewhere between 10 and 11. This is the part that sucks about smaller, um, smaller concerts like this is, it's not like, it's not really always on time, okay? Like the first, the doors open usually at six or seven, people file in, they get their drinks, they get their seats, so they get their spots if there's no seats. They start drinking, an opening band comes on that maybe they're local, maybe they're a smaller band that no one cares about, whatever, blah, blah. Then the next band comes on, and then usually um, a co-sponsored tour act comes on to that. But the main act doesn't get on until 9, 9.30, 10 if things are running crappy. Because sometimes things don't run smoothly, it's a smaller venue. They play for an hour-ish. So around anywhere between 10.30 and 11 is when the venue is going to close and people are going to get out. So you need to be right outside the main entrance and you need to be ready as to log in as soon as it hits any kind of surge because that's all you're going to get from that. The nice thing is you can do that before bar time closes, right? So um like let's go back to let's go back throughout the day, okay? This is how you work surge all day. I get to Seattle. It's four o'clock. So at four o'clock, I know a lot of people are getting ready to get out of work. So I go to the financial district. I go to, in my city, it's Amazon, but there's got to be a, an area there where people use Uber and Lyft a lot. It's probably going to be a tech company, okay? So I get to Amazon early. 
I just sit outside of Amazon at 4.30. Well, there's no parking really outside of Amazon, but like a couple blocks away from the Amazon building is what I do. Is I sit there, five o'clock rolls around, people are getting off for Amazon, it's gonna surge. So I go pick up them. Do, 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 do. And I go back and forth as many times as I can between housing locations and Amazon because it's gonna be surging the whole time. If there is surge other than, than just outside of Amazon, because sometimes it'll spread and be over the whole city, I'll keep my app on. As long as there's surge, my app is on. If there's no surge where I'm at, I'll turn my app off, drive back to Amazon and see if I can get somebody else. Around six o'clock surge stops. So that's okay because um, then the game is on or getting out, okay? So baseball games start at 1 p.m. or they start at 7 p.m. So when they start at 7 p.m., that means at 6 o'clock, 6.30 is gonna surge in housing areas, places where people go from residential areas to the game. So after I'm done with the Amazon people, I go into housing areas, which is nice because that's a lot of times where I end up is housing areas from uh, the Amazon place. I, I hang out there. Um, if I'm hungry, I'll get a sandwich. If I gotta go to the bathroom, I'll go to the bathroom. And sometime between six and seven, it's gonna surge in a residential area. I'll take them to the game. That surge ends at eight, 8.30, all right? Then I kinda do whatever I want to. There's not a lot of surge at eight o'clock. It's not a very busy time. Again, go to the bathroom, eat, fill your tank up with gas, do whatever you got to. Then at 10, I hit a local venue, 10 o'clock, 10.30. Get a surge there, okay? Then after that's done, it's not gonna be too busy between like midnight, you know, 11.30 or whatever, and bar closing time. So again, do whatever you gotta do. Fill your gas tank up, go to the bathroom, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then I go downtown to where the bars are and turn my app off and wait for, wait for it to surge at that time. So you can see, you start work at four, you end work around two or three, so you've almost done a 12 hour shift and you've almost gotten all surge rides. That's how I make 250 to $300 on a Friday, okay? Uh, a lot of people ask me, they, they like, wow, how do you make that much money? Well, that's I'm only taking surge rides, man. I'm not taking a regular ride. So as a new driver, that is the strategy. I've just given you the surge strategy and you just have to implement it in your market. And I've hit the half hour mark, so I didn't want to talk too much. Um, so you guys have questions, now would be a great time to ask the questions. So I'll give you a few, uh, few minutes to ask questions in the chat here, if that's something you'd like to do. Um, go ahead and ask, and if not, you know, I'll go away. Um, at this point, uh, I'd like to just say, Hey, make sure um, you uh, subscribe if you haven't. Go ahead and hit that and hit the YouTube bell icon so that every Wednesday at 3 p.m. when I do this, um, uh, you can you can watch. Uh, it'll let you, if you hit the YouTube bell icon, that stupid bell thing, it'll tell you when I upload a video, it'll tell you when I'm live. Uh, and so that's super cool. Um, if you can, go ahead and like, like this video, share it on all social media platforms and uh, you know, leave a comment. So now that we're done, ask me anything, man. AMA, ask me why I bought a gray hat. Ask me if I got kids. Ask me your Uber questions, anything. Oh, if you're a new driver, Simon says, yo, 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 Simon in the house. What's up, Simon? Simon follows me. So the other things you can do is um, every Monday, what up, Aaron, what up, Simon? is every Monday I release a rideshare video. This week I did Why Uber Pools the Devil. Uh, go check that out if you haven't. Um, every Friday and Saturday I do live driver streams from inside my car to give you an idea of how I do things and why you do things, how the app works, that sort of thing. And every Wednesday I have a new driver stream. That's what I'm doing right now, new drivers. Um, trying to give the tips, because here's the thing. Saying the same thing over and over again gets boring, so a lot of new drivers they get on these, you know, YouTube websites and Facebook forums and no one wants to talk to them because it's like the same stuff over and over again. So that's why I started this series to help new drivers. But yeah, now's your chance, guys. If you want to ask me something, now go ahead. Ask me as much as you will possibly want to. Um, I was going to say something else too. 
Oh, if you're a new driver, um, hopefully you got a bonus for signing up. Uh, if you do have, if you are a new driver and you haven't gotten a bonus, uh, email me on Facebook, email me via my email, email me on Instagram, email me on Twitter. Um, fuck, I just got a trip. Bye, Aaron. Sorry, would love to stay for the stream. <laughs> all right, Simon, go make that money, bud. Go make that money. Um, all of which are in the description below. So the little doodly do down there. If you're a new driver and you didn't get a bonus, hit me up. You have 14 days to get a bonus. I'll tell you how you can get that bonus. Albert says, is it worth to get a lot of long rides with no return trip? I don't know if you answered that or not. Um, that is a very interesting question. And that is a raging debate in the driver uh, world, not only for Uber and Lyft, but for taxis too. In my personal opinion, I would rather have a butt in the car. <laughs> so if it's a long trip, it's a long trip, man. And it sucks. Um, but with Uber and Lyft a little bit, Lyft isn't as good with the destination filter, but they have one. It just doesn't work as well. You can always set your destination filter on to cut back on some of those dead miles. But there are people who do airports, they'll go to the airport what's up all says driver mike what's up driver mike i am um i'm just answering a question from albert right now dri your driver mike go check his channel out he's awesome um he asked is it worth to do a long trip with no return trip so there are people who whose whole business model is go to the airport pick someone up drive them where they're going and go back to the airport so every time they're driving back to the airport they're driving on dead miles they're not getting any money for that it's the same thing with a long trip. If you drive 50 miles north, well, you're going to drive 50 miles south, and those 50 miles are dead miles. So the way to answer your question specifically, Albert, is find out how much it costs to operate your vehicle per mile. And once you do that, the way you calculate the profit on a long trip is you don't just calculate the 50 miles north. You calculate 50 miles north and 50 miles south. So you take how much profit you made off that ride, and then you subtract a hundred miles worth of cost. Now I have a video on how to calculate your per mile costs. So if you go to my video library, there's a website that'll do the calculations for you. You enter all your information, the website does the calculation, and then you know how much it costs to drive your vehicle one mile. And that way you can do the math. Now I operate at a very, very low per mile rate. I operate between 13 and, and 20 cents. It, there's a lot of factors in there. But at 13 cents a mile, I'll take that 50 mile all day long and I'll just eat the dead miles back. Plus, with Uber and to some extent Lyft, you can turn your destination filter off. What that means is you can say, I only want rides that are going to the destination of, for my, let's use the Space Needle as an example since I'm in Seattle. So as I'm driving back, there's a chance I'll get a ride to help kind of kill some of those dead miles because dead miles is really where you lose money. Um, I hope that answered your question. If you have anything more specific than that, Albert, uh, you can follow up on your question. But in my opinion, you know, if you've got a hybrid, uh, if you got a fuel efficient vehicle or you have an electric car, yeah, dude, take, take the long ride, take it. Cause you might get a ride back too. You don't know. It doesn't happen all the times, but sometimes when I drive way out of nowhere, um, I turn around and start headed back. I'll get a ride back sometimes. It's not always the case, but it happens sometimes. It's like you do a little dance when it happens. <laughs> All right, guys, any more questions? Anything. This is, this is the end of the video, so you can ask me anything. Ask me what college I went to. I'll flip a coin. You can guess heads or tails. It's up to you guys, whatever you want. And if uh, there are no more questions, I'll go ahead and end the stream. Sorry if you missed it, you know, uh, it'll take about an hour to upload and you can rewatch it then if that's what you want to do. Um, but like I said, it's up to y'all. So I'll wait a couple more minutes just in case there's any more questions. Albert said, yes, it did. Thanks. I will check that other video out. I have a five speed VW. Oh, damn. You mean you, you drive a stick shift? Look at you old school and shit. Joseph says, how do you estimate what time a venue lets out? To be setting and able and ready for surge. Contact the venue, I guess. 
Well, so that's going to be harder. <laughs> so big venues like uh, like say Bruno Mars is at um, like a big arena. Those will have a specific time. Those places run efficiently, right? So what, whatever that starts, give it three hours-ish, right? So if it starts at 8 o'clock, it'll get out of 11. If it starts at 7 o'clock, it'll get out of 10. The smaller venues are harder because not everything runs smoothly. It's a smaller event. Shit happens. You know, it, it can't tell you to stop playing music necessarily. I mean, you could just turn the house lights off. Sometimes they go late. So a smaller venue, it's going to take a little bit longer, generally speaking. So if it starts at 8 o'clock, you know, it's going to go at 11, 1130. Um, and honestly, Joseph, when concerts get out, it's just, it's one of those things you're just going to have to feel out. Like it's, that's what sucks about starting out on this job as a new driver is you don't have a feel for how like flow works, right? So for me you know, depending on what venue it is, I'll show up at a different time, right? So if it's like, you know, if it's kind of like a more rundown, shadier, less fancy venue, I'm going to show up half an hour later than I normally would. You know, if it's like a marquee theater, if it's a, a America West Arena theater or whatever, I'm going to show up at 10 because I'll be out at 1030. It just depends on your area and how your concerts work, man. Some places have loud or uh, uh, loud noise ordinances, so they have to be out of the building by 10 p.m. That's going to depend on your area, man. Uh, calling the venue is a good, a good uh, shot. When you call the venue, ask them what time the main event starts. So, you know, if it's uh, like a rock and roll band like Pearl Jam, you know, call them and say, hey, when is Pearl Jam going to be on stage? And they'll give you a roundabout time. And then no Pearl Jam is going to play anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half and they're going to close. But it, it varies. I, it sucks. But as you do this longer and you learn more, you'll get like a feel for how that particular venue does. I hope that answered your question. So um, let me go back to Albert's question. He said, yes, thanks. I will check out the other video out. What I'll do is I'll put a link to that uh, video in my description box when this video uploads to YouTube. It usually takes about a couple hours. And um, if you hit me up uh, on any of the social media I have, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I can just send you the link to Albert so you can get it. Your driver Mike says, you can check Facebook or Snapchat live mats to see what people are posting to get an idea of when the event is wrapping up. That is a fantastic idea. So we live in a world of technology. You use that technology to your advantage. Somebody's probably live chatting or live um, broadcasting via Snapchat or Twitter, and then they'll be they'll let you know. <laughs> that's a that's a really good idea, Mike. I appreciate that a lot. All right, guys. Any other questions? Any other comments? Any other concerns? You guys, NFL people, you excited the NFL started? Oh, and your driver, Mike, if you're still listening, man, I got to get those settings. I messed with my settings. I think the live chat got worse from last time. So when you're doing live chats, you don't have as much time to experiment with getting you know, things like your stuff to not lag. So I don't know. I tried to change it from my first one. This is my second one. Maybe my third one, I'll get it right. Third one's a charm, I guess. All right, guys. Well, the next time I post a video will be Friday at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where I do in-car driver streams. And then Monday will be my next video video. And then obviously I'm going to do another new driver live stream. And um, I think since we had so many questions about how to calculate profit um, and such that next week I will do a focus um, – a focus on calculating profit okay so how do you make money um, how do you subtract costs how do you know how much it costs to operate your vehicle how far you should go before you get somebody or should you ignore it all of those things we'll talk about next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time your driver Mike says I'll send them over on Twitter oh thanks your driver Mike that's very helpful you my friend see your driver Mike's a good guy man that's why that's why his channel is doing so much better than mine is 
<laughs> All right, guys. So it's uh, 3.45. I've actually gone longer than I wanted to. I like to keep these about half an hour. Um, but we had a lot of good questions. So I guess, you know, hey, if you guys want to chat, we can. I'll give it two more minutes here. I'll think of some stuff to fill. And if we have questions, we have questions. And if we don't, I'll end it at 3.47. Um, so let's see if I can. I might be able to just. Uh, there's definitely a way to do it, probably. I got to figure out OBS, though. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm pretty excited because um, there's a concert. Co oh, if you're local, there's a concert coming up in Tacoma that's going to be awesome. It's uh, an all-day beer festival with no effects and Bad Religion and a bunch of other really good punk bands from the 90s. Well, so... I'm going to be at that. I'm not going to work that. I'm going to be driving that. I'm not going to be driving there. I'm going to actually be participating in the concert. So, yeah, come to Tacoma and get all that surge. Might even get me. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so, I'm going to wrap it up here because i got more questions. Make sure that you uh, give me a, a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, I see them clicking up right now, so that's good. Uh, subscribe if you haven't so you can get um, updates. Make sure you hit the stupid YouTube bell icon uh, so they'll give you notifications. And I'll see you next time, guys. Uh, I hope this is helping all you new drivers out there. And remember, if you're a new driver and you haven't received a bonus, you are entitled to up to $500 cash for signing up with Uber and Lyft. Hit me up um, off screen. I'll give you the specifics of how you get that. I've already gotten three people who are new drivers money in their pocket because they didn't know they got a bonus when they signed up. And so I hooked them up and I'll hook you up too. All right, guys, deuces.